Hey Adventures, today I am doing a top 5 favorite swords, or at least top 5 favorite named swords within fantasy. All, I, technically I have 7 here, but I'm going to only go with 5, be, well, 2 are honorable mentions. This shouldn't be a terribly lengthy video, I think that it will mostly just be me talking a little bit about what sword it is and why I like it as much as I do. So. The first, and these are in no particular order either, um, the first sword I have on this list is Orcrist. This is from The Hobbit, and there are actually a lot of swords in The Lord of the Rings that are that could easily be my favorite. I chose Orcrist right now because it's always, I've, I mean, I've always loved the fact that Glamdring and Orcrist were created by the same smith, and they were both just um, super cool, super interesting swords the way that they worked. But I think what ultimately puts Orcrist above Glamdring for me is what happens to it at the end of the story. So minor spoilers here, well, pretty major spoilers here, I guess, but spoilers here for The Hobbit. If you haven't read the movie, I mean, if you haven't read the book or watched the movie, then oh well, you're kind of a little bit late now. But at the end of The Hobbit, Orcrist is laid on Thorin's chest. Thorin, of course, dies in the at the end of The Hobbit, and so Orcrus is, is laid on his chest along with the Arkenstone, and it is there to ward off evil and to warn of foes and roving orcs, essentially. The thing about Orcrist, Glamdring, and Sting is all three of them glow blue when orcs or goblins are near. In the movies, they only ever showed that it was Sting that did this, and that was one of the things that really annoyed me because Orcris and Glamdring are supposed to as well, and I really love that. So, the next sword I have on this list is Riptide from the Percy Jackson series. All, all the series that Percy Jackson is in, he uses Riptide as his sword. This sword, what makes this sword super cool to me, is the fact that it's magically camouflaged as a pin. So, he pulls the cap off the pin, and it turns into his cool sword, which the style of sword that it is, they specifically describe it as a leaf-bladed sword about three feet long, I believe. And that style of sword is always one that I've really enjoyed. It's a very, it's a short, one-handed sword used for lots of speed, but it's also it's a fun sword to wield. This is shorter than three feet, but this is kind of the idea of it. It's, it's just a short sword that you can do a lot with without really needing two hands to do it because sometimes the shield is more useful than a two-handed sword. It depends. It's There's lots of trade-offs, but it's also because you just stick the cap back on and it clips back down into a little pin, and you can, there's so much about the magic behind Riptide and everything that it just becomes one of my favorite swords. Third sword I have on this list is Anduril by, or from, again, from The Lord of the Rings. This one was at one point, Narsil, and I really like both Narsil and Anduril. They're both super interesting, They're basically the same sword though, and so I chose Anduril because it's Aragorn's. Um, I love Narsil, it's absolutely one of my favorite swords, but when it becomes Anduril, or the Flame of the West, and it is used for exactly what it's used for in the books, um, it becomes one of my favorite swords. It doesn't really have a whole ton of magical properties in that same way. There is some. It does glow white, I believe. But the, oftentimes people overlook that fact as well. It's a very much just a symbol more than anything else, but it's still a beautiful sword and it's the way they crafted it and imagined it for the movies is pretty spot on. The fourth sword that I have, have on this list is the Sword of Martin the Warrior. This one is not technically given a specific name, but it is called the Sword of Martin the Warrior. That is its name. So I'm including it on this list because I do really love it. It's, again, it itself does not have very many magical properties, although it is made from a star and, well, it's made from a meteorite. And it's just a very simple yet elegant hilt. It does have a ruby in its pommel, but that's really the only fancy details that are added to this sword. But the way it's used throughout the Redwall series is super cool and there's so much lore and history revolving around it and the way that different characters acquire it and have to use it and what it signifies and the messages and themes that it is used to present along the way is one of the greatest aspects of this sword. So before I get to my fifth and final sword on this list, again it's not in any particular order, 
but I'll include my two honorable mentions. So the first is Nightblood from the Cosmere books. I really like Nightblood within the Stormlight Archives, but in Warbreaker, it's not my favorite. There's, it's okay, it, but it kind of was a little bit annoying in Warbreaker to me. In Stormlight, I really like it. it there's something about it that just really makes me enjoy it, but because it's so much so present in Warbreaker and I didn't love it in Warbreaker, it's an honorable mention rather than a favorite. The other honorable mention that I included is of course Excalibur. You can't really exclude Excalibur from a famous or a named swords list, not really. It's too important to the fantasy genre as a whole to be excluded. There's of course so many various iterations of what Excalibur is what sword it is specifically, whether it's the Sword of the Stone, whether it's the Sword from the Lady of the Lake, whether it's the same sword in both cases, or whether it's something completely different. There's so many different stories about where Excalibur comes from, as well as the what magical properties it might have, that there's not really one definitive Excalibur. But I do really love the sword, but it's never been like an absolute favorite of mine. I thought it's cool. I thought the, I love the lore of the sword, the various different lores of the sword, I guess. I think probably my personal favorite is that it's the sword that was in the Sword in the Stone. Probably, maybe not, I don't know. There's lots of great stories with Excalibur, but it's never been my favorite sword of all time. So, the last sword on my list of named swords, of top five named swords, is Maya Laren from Stormlight Archive. This is Adolin Cullen's sword, and it could possibly be my favorite sword, and it has strongly to do with one specific scene in Rhythm of War, and if you've read Rhythm of War, you'll know exactly what scene I'm talking about. But that one scene made me probably say this is one of my favorite swords. I mean, obviously it's in my top five favorite swords, but it could possibly be my favorite sword. Um, so that one scene is amazing, Plus the relationship that Adolin has with that sword is absolutely amazing. There's so much great stuff that is seen with that sword, so many great scenes that are that include that sword. Um, so that's why Mylaren is the final sword on my top five favorite swords list. Let me know what your favorite swords are in the comments down below. This is kind of a little bit different of a video from what we have been doing recently. We've done other top five favorites in the past that aren't specifically one story or one aspect of a story. But I, I was given the idea to do this top five, or to a named swords video, and I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do, but then Kate suggested that I do uh, top five favorite swords, and I was like, okay, that's a, that's a great way to do it. Um, so those are some of my favorite swords. There's so many other named swords in fantasy, and I'm sure that if I were to think about it and to go through every series that I've ever read, I would find some other ones that I would love to put up there. But, I mean, when I, when you think about the fact that I could have filled all five plus the two honorable mentions with Swords from Lord of the Rings, oh, that's... really should include the sword of, from the Children of Hurin, um, Turin's sword. But because I forgot to include it, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I could have filled all seven spots with swords from Tolkien's Middle-earth stuff, but I didn't. So I'm, I'm okay with what I've got, but there's a lot of great swords out there and there's, I'm happy that I was able to branch out from just Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and Children of Fur and Silmarillion and the rest of those books because there's so many great swords in that series it's alone. Had a Fang, Aeglis, I believe, or Eglis, I don't know exactly how to pronounce some of the words from Lord of the Rings, but there's a lot of great swords, super awesome ones, um, but I'm okay with what I got, so I'm gonna go with this. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and comment down below, like I already mentioned. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. If you find that you really enjoy our content, I would love for you to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. We will see you guys again soon. Stay warm.